What's going on everybody? It is Juan from Raven Drone Solutions. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about my bad experience with contracting. Um, this is a video that honestly is going to shed a lot of light into some of the harsh realities of the drone industry, which I've already talked about in another video, which I'll link down below. Um, but just uh, this, this experience may not reflect everybody's, but it is mine, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, this is not to discourage other people from joining the drone industry, but some things to keep in mind. So, without further ado, let's get right to it. So, for legal reasons, I'm not going to disclose the company's name simply because I do not want to have any issues. Uh, I doubt this video will go viral enough that they'll see it, but regardless, I just don't want this to get out. Um, if you've been in the drone industry for any length of time, you've probably heard of this company. Some of you might have worked for them. Um, some of you might not agree with what I'm, what I'm going to say. But regardless, I just thought I'd share my experience um, just to shed a little bit of light. And hopefully some of you can make the right choice if you're faced with a similar situation. Now, this particular company, um, they're like many of these other uh, drone job websites that you know give pilots... Uh, you know, licensed pilots, jobs, um, doing mostly insurance inspections, okay? Now, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but this company uh, basically was very sloppy with the way they did things. This company, I contacted them, I submitted my application, it took them a while to get back to me, which, fine. Um, it, I had to do, obviously, some training with them, which was very, very minimal, Um and not only that, but they were constantly late. Uh, they didn't specify the time that I had to be there. I mean, they just told me a time, but they didn't say whether it was uh, Eastern time or Mountain Pacific, whatever the case might be. So, you know, I took time out of my schedule and yeah, they were, they were quite sloppy with their work. Um, really, like I said, the training was nothing crazy. It was, it was, it, was, it almost seemed like, like it was a joke. Um, and not only that, but after I did the training, I expected to get some work for, from them. And I had to contact them after a while. I'm like, hey, listen, guys, uh, are you going to give me any work? Or, is there, or, or like, did you just not like my interview? Whatever the case might be. Um, I had to give them actually like, sample work. And they didn't respond to it. So I was like, okay, guys, um, I need to know what's going on. You know, if you need me to do the, the, the practice mission all over again, I'll do it. But, you know, I just want to start getting jobs. Um, so yeah, that took a good month, month and a half, and then I finally got, uh, I got my first gig. So, when I got f my first gig, um, it wasn't that far away from my location, which was great. Fine, great. I get it, I, you know, I don't have to travel very far. Well, this is where the kicker was. It was only one job that, that day, and then they, they were paying $45. Um, I couldn't get a hold of the insurance agent. I couldn't get a hold of because uh, it was it was obviously a Sunday, um, but you know I tried to do my best. Um, I tried to reach out to the homeowner, and I actually wasn't given a homeowner uh, name, so I called the operations. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It wasn't a uh, it was not a, a, a Sunday. It was actually a Friday. I apologize. Anyway, um, I called the operations manager for this area, um, and I told her what was going on. She's like, "Yeah, listen, you know, just." If you need to, just tailgate into the gated community. Yeah, I heard that from this person. I'm not going to call her name. Uh, but I basically immediately understood that, okay, this company likes to do some real shady stuff. Um, and this is one thing you guys have to be very careful with. Because a lot of times these companies, they don't care because the pay really sucks. And they expect you to uh, accept all the liability because they don't have to do it. Um, now... Don't get me wrong, uh, it's not like I haven't tailgated into gated communities when I was younger, but the fact is I'm doing it as a business and that is not a way that I want to start off my business. That is not a liability I'm willing to accept. And I just basically said, no, I'm not going to do it until I talk to this insurance agent and I'm able to get proper uh, clearance basically to go in uh, to the gated community and do the job. But for $45, that was that was a very, very low, low paying gig for the amount of work that I had to do. I had to talk to the homeowner or the insurance agent. I had to, I had to basically set up all the time to just make a meager $45. 
Um, not only that, but this lady said, look, I got other jobs for you. And basically it was all around Miami, basically from, from down in almost Biscayne all the way up to almost Fort Lauderdale. And it was six different properties and they offered me $150. I'm like, well, okay, $150 each. She's like, no, 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 the whole thing. I'm like, how does that make any sense? That's a very low paying, that's a, that's, that's very low. Now, I did it anyway, simply because I wanted to get some experience, but the amount of work that I had to do was insane for the amount of work, for the amount of money that I was making. Moral of the story is that I found out very, very, very quickly that with this company, there really was no winning with them. Um, I was getting paid anywhere from $25 to $45 to go to a house, not just fly the mission, but I had to take pictures all around the house. I had to set up the time with the homeowner. Um, I had to obviously take time out of my schedule. Uh, sometimes the homeowner wouldn't pay, t wouldn't pick up. A lot of times the homeowner wanted to be there, which I understand because I'm going to their house and I'm, and I'm doing the job. But the fact is, I'm like, all this work, and you have to schedule it around what they say because you don't want to show up to, 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 to a person's house unannounced, especially not in a state like Florida or Texas because there's a lot of guns here. Um, and yeah, I had, like I just quickly saw that the juice wasn't worth the squeeze, not with the amount of money that I was making. And one thing that this, I, I called the company one time and they said, well, look, if you do four houses in one hour, that's a hundred dollars an hour. That's very good. I'm like, how on earth are you going to make that kind of money when none of these houses are right next to each other? I mean, that makes no sense. Um, not only that, but you cannot do these houses in 15 minutes. It always took me at least an hour, at least an hour to get it done and get it done right because they were, they were, they would berate pilots for not doing things correctly. Um, and to me, I like to do things the right way. So yeah, clearly I saw that the amount of money that I was making just did not fit what I was actually doing. Next thing is that I saw very, very quickly, not just this company, but other companies, and is that they expect five-star work for one-star pay. You know, they expect very professional work. They expect you to get in there and do the job very meticulously, and they're paying you very, very, very subpar. I mean, like, it's not even gas money. It doesn't even equate to gas money. Um, you know, a lot of times just getting to that location, you know, gas, tolls, you know, just your time in general, you're barely making minimum wage, if that. So definitely it wasn't worth it because these companies were very, very bad with, with their pay. Next thing was that this company was very, very disrespectful to pilots. And I mean, the amount of times that pilots were berated for not following procedures, like while I understand because if I'm paying somebody to do something, I expect them to get it done and get it done right. Uh, especially if, especially if I gave clear instruction on how to do it. But the fact is if I'm paying them almost next, like pretty much next to nothing, I can't expect them to, to really put in a lot of good work. And yeah, this company was extremely disrespectful to pilots on m multiple occasions. Um, and then they had the audacity afterwards to say, but we have your back. I'm like, no, you don't, you do not have our backs. You pay us next to nothing. So yeah, definitely not, uh, definitely very, very bad look on that company. 
Now, the other thing, and I've kind of mentioned this already, was that the amount that I was paid was not nearly enough to cover operating costs, uh, much less make a profit. And this is one thing that a lot of you guys have to understand that when you're pricing your services, uh, you have to be very intentional with how you price it. Don't worry so much about what other people are doing because the fact is many people lower their prices to the point where it's not profitable. Um, and this company really didn't even factor in any costs. They just wanted to make money for themselves. And quite frankly, the way that they structured their business is if you got a little mini, a DJI mini for Christmas and you know, and you, and, and the property is like right next to where you live. That's how they structured it. And that's how much you're getting paid. I mean, for me doing $25 worth of work is a favor. It's not, it's not an actual, it's not an actual paid gig. So definitely this company, uh, yeah, they did not think, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think they even cared, but, uh, yeah, they clearly did not pay nearly enough what a pilot is worth. And Definitely, if you're out there and you're if you're doing these kind of jobs, you have to understand that, that like you have to know your worth if you really want to make money because companies like this are going to continue to take advantage of pilots. So the next thing, and this actually didn't happen with this company that I was that I was talking about, it happened with another company, uh, and that is that one company made me sign a non-compete agreement, and the enforceability is questionable. Now I'm not going to say who this company is, uh, but basically it's a company that. Makes me, made me do a lot of uh, a lot of shoots, and basically what they wanted was for me to sign a non compete that said that I cannot work with any of these type of people in the state of Florida. And I even asked a lawyer about it, and they said, "Well, it's not to say that they can't enforce it. It's just the fact that it's very tough to enforce it because a lot of people have this kind of license that 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 they're referring to, and they can't dom they can't tell you what to do. They can't dominate the market." And on top of that, the amount that I was even being paid was hardly enough to cover basic bills. And I was working for them almost full time. I was working even even on the weekends for them. Um, so that's one thing you guys have to be very careful with. Um, you know, definitely a lesson that I learned the hard way, and that is don't sign non compete agreements unless if unless if you know for a fact that what you're going to get paid is enough that's going to cover your, your operating costs. Um, be very careful with non-competes because they can they can bind you and they can really screw you over if you're not careful. Um, so yeah, definitely be careful when it comes to non-competes. All right, next thing is that uh, many companies and even some that I've worked with, um, they basically ask pilots to behave like employees, um, even though they're paying them as contractors. Uh, a lot of times this means you have to wear a uniform, you have to go buy a script. Now there's a big debate among people whether or not this is legal because uh, a contractor is supposed to do things their way, but if they're under another company, I mean, to be honest with you, I always say that um, you got to research it. But to me, if I'm being a contractor, I'm not an employee and I will not act like an employee. I will act like a contractor. Um, so definitely be very careful with this kind of stuff. And this, these are things that I've seen. Uh, and definitely just uh, do your due diligence when you're uh, seeking out some of these companies because some of them, they don't really know what they're doing. Next thing, and that is that a lot of times the jobs can be very sporadic and they're not a reliable source of income. Uh, one thing I will say is uh, when it comes to a lot of these contracting gigs like with like drone base, drone up or whatever, um, that cannot be your only source of income because I'm telling you, you're going to go broke. A lot of times it's feast or famine. You either get a lot or you know, for a certain period of time, and then you don't see anything at all. So you definitely need to have uh, other sources of income if you really want to make money. Uh, even with cell towers, even though I was told like, look, with cell towers, you can pretty much live off of cell towers. You can do a whole bunch of cell towers a year, and you can pretty much make six figures. I knew one guy, he told me he made $300,000 in one year. Um, but still, like that's, that's not the norm. Um, so be very careful. And, you know, don't, don't think that just because you're working under a company uh, as a contractor that you're just going to get jobs left to right and that um, and that you know you can sustain yourself. A lot of times it doesn't work that way. So just keep that in mind. Uh, definitely one thing that I saw very very quickly. The amount that I made was very dependent on uh, many factors, and it was very difficult to calculate future profits. Um, and really, this is just the nature of contracting, because like I said, a lot of times it can be quite sporadic. 
Um, you know, especially for a lot of these low paying jobs, um, really the amount that you have to spend in order to do these jobs correctly and make a profit. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't add up. Uh, there was one time I was told to do cell tower inspections by another company and they basically gave me a list and the amount that I was going to be making per tower really didn't add up. I was like, mm, I don't know. It's kind of low. And on top of that, they wanted a bunch of different gear. And, and on top of that, they said, look, each tower is going to take anywhere from two to four hours. I'm like, okay, well, then there's a good chance that most days I'll only be doing one because a lot of these are very spread out. And, you know, I told this company, I'm like, look, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to up the pay a bit because this is not, this is not profitable. And they basically told me no. Um, I've even seen other pilots post things of uh, companies saying we're paying $80 per tower. I'm like, $80 per tower, you can't pay me to get out of bed to, for $80 per tower when sometimes, like I said, these towers that are not close together, they're very far away from each other. So obviously it depends on the scope of work, but you have to understand that a lot of times these companies, they'll, they'll try to push the very low end. Uh, a lot of times you got to push back, but, uh, definitely, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables when it comes to your profits. So just keep this in mind. And especially when you're contracting, this is a very important topic. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to my bad experience with contracting, uh, and that is that, and I guess this is kind of a blessing in a way, and that is that it made it very clear that I am the one that I have to take the initiative and get my own clients. Because if I rely on some of these companies, I'm going to go broke, basically. Uh, and this is why I attend a lot of networking events. I go to trade shows. I go out and try to meet people because the fact is, I know that with these companies, I can't rely on them because a lot of times they hinder my growth. And that's just the truth. Um, a lot of times these companies will hinder your growth because they require you to sign non-competes or the pay is too low or they require that you can't, you can't talk about your own business or you can't hand out your own business cards, which is understandable. Um, but a lot of times, yeah, these companies will hinder your growth and, and you really have to go out there and you gotta, you gotta take the initiative and get your own clients because if not, you know, you're not going to stay in business very long. All right, guys. So that is it for today. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Hit me one of these and subscribe. It'll help with the algorithm. Um, if anybody has ever had any bad experiences with contracting, uh, please chime in and let, uh, other pilots know, uh, just the reality of, 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 of the drone industry and, um, especially about contracting. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, I'll make a video next on, um, my good experiences with contracting. All right. So if you want that, if you want to see that video, stay tuned and you'll see it. All right, guys, that is it for today. See you next time.